Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we will be discussing about two fall storms that, uh, yeah, I say fall because they will take on some very fall-like characteristics. They will be powerful, they will be large, and they will be taking um, their shape across the west. One is already underway, the second one is going to be obviously a bit further out, but lots of rain. Some early snow across the mountainous areas of the west is all occurring, has occurred, and uh, yeah, the kind of the pattern surrounding that. I will be quickly also going over the hurricane threat uh, that is potentially across the east coast, uh, meaning the northeast. Yeah, so um, just a potential though, but yeah, mainly f focusing on those two storm systems. Now, I will show you the radar as well and um, discuss a few things that are maybe a bit uh, different, like the temperatures following those storm systems. Okay, uh, before we get into this video, if you guys... Uh, you know, enjoy this channel, but uh, you're not subscribed, consider doing that. Obviously, don't subscribe just because I told you so. I always say that. We don't want people subscribing just, you know, <laughs> just to subscribe. You gotta enjoy it, and if you uh, wanna uh, hit the thumbs up button, also consider doing so. Uh, and yeah, any comments, neutral, negative, positive, whatever it may be, leave them down below. I answer or read at least uh, 90, 95%. So, yeah. Uh, let's get into this video. So first off, I told you I was going to look at the radar, and let's do exactly that. So as I uh, open up this radar, notice that I'm looking at um, most of the United States and into a good portion of southern Canada. What we do have is the remnants of actually Tropical Storm Fred. It's now a extra tropical, right? It's not really um, tropical at this point. It's just, just a low pressure on land, pretty much. It still has a decent area of circulation. And notice that it is producing quite a bit of rain across Pennsylvania, into New York, and into portions of Maryland. So definitely uh, a decent, decent rainfall for uh, a lot of folks. And the thing is that this rainfall is uh, obviously very, very heavy. It is... Uh, rather continuous across a large chunk of time and if you were to take a look at uh, for example Binghamton, Syracuse, you know southern New York has seen a lot of rain a lot and you know this rain it's just starting to move in that will bring in more precipitation more showers and that could cause some flooding and uh, speaking of which there has been some flooding in North Carolina that was pretty bad also I do want to mention that there is a threat for uh, some tornadoes with this um, always on the on the lower side of this on the northeastern quadrant there is a tornado threat really i wouldn't say it's too awfully high at this point i think there were a few reported across uh west virginia virginia north carolina area but um notice right there harrisburg seeing a nasty little cell right there kind of a line of storms um pushing through and yeah a little bit of showers on the back side of this so again this is tropical storm fred it isn't one of the big storms that's uh I want to be talking about but notice that again it is dropping quite a bit of rain there is quite a bit of precipitation behind it and a lot of these areas did see rain from tropical storm fred so this is uh you know it could aggravate some of the areas <clears throat> especially the ones that saw uh, quite a bit of rain notice there's a decent cluster forming right there across alabama into tennessee and into mississippi also texas seeing quite a bit there have been a few rain amounts across north carolina especially in this corner where the amounts reached um in you know insane proportions up to 11 12 inches of rain and it's the mountains so yes that caused some landslides uh, i think there are uh, unfortunately a few fatalities with this so uh yeah just goes just goes to show you that even once uh, these systems make it on land they have a lot of power to drop quite a bit of of rain um and yeah that's what you have for the southeast now let me quickly pan over here and now you can see there's a lot of activity for the west it's a you know it's a desert right and we have a lot of rain going through you can see salt lake city has been dealing with it for most of the day it is now starting to push more into colorado the colorado mountains definitely rain that they need across these fire locations again these aren't the worst hit areas with the fire but, but there are some fires across utah colorado so these need to you know this is definitely going to be beneficial and also just the long-term drought they've been stuck in notice Wyoming uh not that much activity especially for the northern and northeastern side of the uh, country but uh notice there is some rain reaching into Yellowstone right into southern Wyoming definitely uh, quite a bit of rain showers and this will continue to progress uh, again and this is the first storm that I'm talking about one of the two as the title again has uh two storm systems this is the this is the first storm system that is right now developing <clears throat> across the across the western United States and it will continue to evolve in the next couple of days so I will be keeping an update on that um, so let's continue pushing this forward. Notice that as we push this forward, we see that 
a lot of uh, Montana had some rain. Uh, definitely decent amounts, I think, for Great Falls. I saw earlier some of those locations saw up to an uh, inch, inch and a half. And in some years, there were some pockets of two inches. Notice buildings got a bit. And yes, there is still more on the way. Notice that there are showers across also Arizona getting help from that system, the monsoons. And you can see it's just streams of moisture going through Nevada right there. Definitely uh, nice, nice to see this. And... Um, I do want to say that speaking of the snow, which I mentioned earlier, there is some snow. Notice right there across the peaks, right? I mean, obviously, this is very, very, very high up, but, you know, that's snow nonetheless. And, yeah, with any other additional precip that comes through, it will continue to drop that snow across those extremely high, high elevation areas. Um, especially, obviously, during the overnight hours. There were even a few areas I saw in Wyoming that picked up on a bit of that snow. And uh, on the radar, there were some colors of blue. Let me see if I could find that up oh, right there across the Grand Tetons right there. Definitely seeing a bit of snow. So that is interesting. Um, but again, nothing too unusual. But yeah, so this is what's going on. You can see the whole country and into southern Canada will be dealing with uh, some active weather. And again, a lot will be from this system. Now, this doesn't look that well put together, but if I were to turn on the weather models and show you the, the HER model, the first model I want to look at, let's take a glance at it. So this is, again, I want to track this, uh, this first storm system and show you. This model came out at around 2 p.m. and this is what it shows as a 5, so you can, that's, that's pretty accurate and we're recording this at 6 and again that mimics what the radar is doing right now. So again, tropical storm Fred, by the way, uh, will move into the northeast. Quite a bit of rain from New York into Connecticut, Boston, uh, definitely decent amounts of rain, but um, notice that across the southern United States we also see quite a bit of showers and storms just to do with uh, the tropical activity that's been going there. But what we do and what really catches the eye is look what happens across Utah. Colorado, Wyoming, we see streams of moisture pouring in, slowly shifting towards the east as we get into the overnight hours, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in the morning. But notice that Salt Lake City is still getting quite a bit of rainfall into Utah, more into Colorado now again, the mountainous areas, into portions of Wyoming and Montana, seeing decent amounts, especially across western Wyoming. But notice that tomorrow by 4 or 5 p.m., the system is still dragging on, producing more showers, and it more, now more affecting northeastern Wyoming, right, into potentially the Dakotas, developing into a powerful line of storms. Still some showers, and yes, you could see right there, if I were to zoom in, that is a vibrant color of blue across the ranges in Wyoming and Colorado. Um, yeah, definitely quite a bit more rain, and you can see this system kind of expands into a widespread light to moderate rainfall. There won't be a lot of severe weather on the backside of this, which is why it's like a fall system. You know, they often develop these features where on the backside of it, it's just gentle rain or it could be a blizzard if it was a very strong system and if it was much colder. But um, yeah, there could be some storms, but again, most of the severe weather will be occurring out in front, which if I were to show you across the north central United States, look tomorrow at around late tomorrow 10. Uh, this is, yeah, this is Thursday 7, 8, 9, 10. You can see across Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, a lot of these storms developing into Minnesota. And yeah, several rounds potentially. I mean, look at Sioux City right there. One, two, maybe even a third one backing in. So that's going to drop quite a bit of rain. And if we were to go back and take a look at the region of the whole United States, and take a look at the total accumulated precipitation. Notice that there are quite a few locations that we'll see a lot. Especially, look at that, western Wyoming, eastern Montana. Definitely good amounts of rain. Potentially, you know, an inch to two inches, maybe even more across certain areas. Especially the mountains where they could squeeze out that moisture. Notice the northeast where uh, Fred goes, uh, there is quite a bit of moisture with that as well. And... Let's take a look at the global model. Actually, no. Let's take a look at some other high-res models that are rather accurate, but only go out to uh, 60 hours. So, again, just a short range. Notice it does show similar activity across uh, the west. NAM 12 km. It goes out to 84 hours, so it goes out a bit farther. And notice that it does show a lot into southern Canada. That's when that system really starts to develop and uh, slow down. So, that could definitely drop quite a bit of rain across Canada. But also, you know, similar details across the Dakotas and into Utah, Wyoming. Quite a bit across the northeast that NAM 12 km shows. This is the high-res Canadian. Um, you can see that it does show quite a bit, especially for Minnesota. Let's take a look at the global models and just to show you what, like, say, the GFS shows. Again, notice there's our system today continues to move on very, very slowly, right? This is what it looks like by tomorrow, late tomorrow. It literally, 
a lot really looks unchanged, but it does start pushing out into the Dakotas, Nebraska. There's our widespread rain, late to moderate rain. We do see some severe weather potentially across the Dakotas, especially more towards the eastern half of both the Dakotas, some heavier rain. And into Minnesota, you can see it does develop into a rather powerful system, quite a bit of isobars. Again, this would be a blizzard on the backside if this were a snowstorm. Some storms into Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, though it does kind of dwindle out and push way up into southern Canada. And speaking of that second system, which I've been uh, talking about, but um, or I said I was talking about, I was going to talk about, but I haven't mentioned it yet. There it is. Look at it. I mean, a couple days behind it, right there, a second little low pressure moves in from the northwest or from the Pacific Ocean onto the northwest. And it looks very small, much weaker than this first system. But once it reaches the plains, it, it does develop into a rather powerful system. And it's small, you know, but there could be a bit more severe weather into, look, Iowa, southern Minnesota, into Illinois, Wisconsin. And, um, yeah, that definitely does bring additional rain and potentially even a few more waves of uh, precipitation after that. So definitely an active pattern for the northern plains of the United States. And if we were to take a look at the total accumulated precip, yeah, there's definitely quite a bit uh, here. You know, I mean, that's not massive amounts. The southeast is more, but usually the northern plains aren't as wet as the southeast. Look at that across Texas. Those are some very heavy amounts. And I also want to point out those amounts right there. If you saw it on the radar there, I was ignoring it for a bit because I wanted to focus on that storm system. Look at that right there. That would be Hurricane Henry. And it gets pretty darn close. There has been a ship towards the west. Look, I mean, the Cape Cod, Nantucket, that's a potential category one hurricane, if not two, approaching the New England coast right there doesn't make direct landfall per se according to this model run but it's definitely there and i don't want to make folks freak out but uh you know it's been consistent with the model runs look six hours ago it showed it more onto new york right so again it showed it in that general vicinity this was from today in the morning a stronger potentially this would be almost a major hurricane hitting uh new england now that again hopefully will change and you can see this is the one from uh almost almost 24 hours ago if not yeah a bit more and this is the one from 24 hours you can see so there has been a general um a general trend of consistency unfortunately but well hopefully that does change now let's take a look at the canadian and first take a look at those two large storm systems and we'll take a look at what it shows with that hurricane potential so notice there's our first system across wyoming utah into colorado we do see a a good portion of that rain again covering those same areas for a few uh few sets of six hour periods so that's going to be quite a bit of rainfall much needed notice it moves on to onto the dakotas late thursday into early friday so late tomorrow early friday and once it does you can see it balloons into that very large system very powerful and again it's fall like as usually with the summer storms um, summer storm systems you don't see a a strong uh, cold front a, a warm front right we, we see just these disorganized bands of showers but yeah definitely a very very well organized fall storm and following that the, uh, the canadian does show also a second one which uh, the GFS showed as well, and it does continue to show even more activity following that. So this one actually shows almost three systems, which evolves into quite a bit of a quite a bit of a beast. But notice, yeah, I mean, quite a bit of rain could be returning for Wyoming in the west. Look at that storm after storm after storm. So yeah, I mean, that's definitely going to be good news. And notice uh, with that hurricane, what this does, the Canadian keeps it weaker. It does bring it pretty close to the shore, and definitely some rain and impacts, probably some swell, rip currents, strong winds maybe, but it doesn't really make landfall per se. Kind of just mingles it around in the Bay of Maine and just, just kind of sweeps it off. Definitely though, out of that, there would be quite a bit of rain. Notice it does show that, obviously. And it does show quite a bit across the northern plains with those storm systems. So that's that's another area that we'll have to watch for, obviously. Um, let's take a look at the European. Probably uh, the king or the, the queen of all models. It's definitely a very, very high accuracy model. Does start showing some showers across southern Canada today. Notice Wyoming, right? Colorado moving gradually towards the east into Friday. There's going to be some rain across the Dakotas into Montana, Nebraska. Some severe weather, especially late Friday when that system starts exploding. And you can see we have a cold front, a warm front right in here. I'm willing to bet if I were to take a look at the anomalies, there is nuzzled some very warm air between those two fronts. And yep, right there you can see very, very warm. And behind it, very chilly, allowing for some of that early season snow to fall, especially across, you know, those high elevated areas where uh, usually it's uh, just a bit still too warm at this time of the year. But, you know, the precip's there, the cold air's there, so definitely causing some early season snowfall. Um, and look at that, Minnesota, and it does start taking more of a weakened shape and structure later on, but not before it rakes some storms to Wisconsin, Illinois maybe, um, Iowa, Minnesota. Again, a lot of these areas need that rain. Uh, the European regarding uh, Hurricane uh, 
Henry keeps it much weaker, not really organized, and the National Hurricane Center does think they're rather confident it will develop into a hurricane, which is why I'm already kind of doubting the European with its handling of the system, but it does still keep it pretty darn close to the North England coast, whatever does form of it, which is much weaker, but it does keep it rather close, kind of what the Canadian model did. And then, by the way, the European does show that second system again, nice cold front not as much of a warm front but definitely goes through weekends much quicker and then the european actually shows a, a third system right there a, a rather rather large and complex one that could again be more of a upper air uh, disturbance kind of causing uh, more uh, showers and storms and causing more of an air mass change rather than just kind of a quick shot of rain but yeah definitely expansive and, and large and uh, yeah, drags up a lot of rain along the east coast. If it does become powerful enough, it could bring quite a bit of chilly air potentially in. The European not favoring that too much, but I mean, you definitely you can see that, that blob of chillier air right there. Definitely causing uh, some uh, signs of some cooler weather. So yeah, that's basically it with the rainy side of this. I, I want to quickly show you the snowfall with this and what the, what the models are showing. Yes, there is some snowfall again across the higher elevated areas. And um... What are we looking at? Come on, uh, not the sixth star. We want to take a look at total accumulated snowfall. And there we go. Notice that there is going to be some amounts in the higher, highest of the highest, maybe eight inches even. So, you know, definitely something to look look for uh, across uh, the early early snow into higher elevations. This is the GFS. Show some more in Utah rather than Wyoming. Um, so, again, there are some differences. But notice, look at that. Starts showing more widespread snow towards southern Canada. And this is the Canadian, which again shows more what the European did, did with. Look at that, seven inches right there. So again, not widespread. That will be still a bit while longer. Um, at least that's what it looks like. And uh, yeah, definitely something though that indicates a sign of seasons uh, changing. This is the United Kingdom model. I saw nice show it to you if I have extra time. And notice it does show that snowfall, just like the other models, just a bit more broad, widespread, probably again, less accurate. In terms of precipitation, this model again favors quite a bit of activity for the Northern Plains, actually showing some quite a bit of amounts of that rain. And look, you could tell it makes the landfall with Hurricane Henry right there. That's not good. And I don't know if it has a, yeah, it doesn't have a simulated radar, but I mean, we could take a look at the 12-hour precipitation and kind of track that system based on where that rain is. And look, there's Henry, right? It's tracking right there, the center of it, assuming that's a pretty strong system. And boom, it kind of stalls it out right there, dropping within 12 hours, potentially, according to this model, seven inches across the northeast. So, yeah, that wouldn't be good, um, to say the least. But it's it's it could definitely a possibility. All right, folks, so that is basically it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you all on uh, the next episode. See ya. Bye.